and died. Now you say, Pastor Forbes, does that happen today? Let me quickly say it is possible. But let me quickly say that whether we die physically or not, we die. And one of the worst forms of death is when your conscience has been roasted. My conscience has died. Where wrong doesn't matter, right is, does not matter, there's nothing like truth, anything can happen. I can sacrifice children because I want power. I can kill people because I want power. I can twist examination results. I can do anything because conscience has gone. The convicting power, the authority that tells me alone that, hey, you did wrong. You spoke wrong. You were rude to that man. You were not nice to that lady. The bank overpaid you etc etc ad infinitum conscience what says your conscience when we talked about the roman soldier at the cross of jesus christ i think he made peace with his conscience i really wish the bible followed his own life as one of the many stories he looked up at this man on the cross and said, in spite of the fact that we killed him, we beat him from the garden all the way, we arrested him, we took him to the praetorium guard, we did everything, the cross and everything, we spared him, we put the vinegar, we laughed at him, we spat at him, we plucked his beard, we gave him vinegar to drink, we jeered at him, all that. Now I am alone from the crowd where I can make decisions all by myself, where the cacophony of voices is not there anymore. I want to make a decision by my conscience. Most times, it's when we sleep at night. Or before we sleep, you have that nagging thing. You know that I was wrong. I was cowardly. I should have stood for that man. I should have stood for that child. I really could have given that person a ride. I could have paid that bill. That item that I said had finished is in the store. The food that I said I don't have, actually I do have. The loan that I say I cannot pay is actually in my pocket. Conscience. What says your conscience? Because ladies and gentlemen, contrary to what most of us believe, by the mercy of God, we will all live long. And there is something called posterity. It will judge me by my decisions. It will judge you by your decisions. What does your conscience say? Does it excuse you or does it accuse you? If it excuses you, then go ahead. If it accuses you, you know that it's just something you are not at peace with. You are not sure. You want to do that. You're giving support to this project or support to this idea or support to this person. You're helping to fight a case against or for. What does your conscience say? Does it excuse you? Or does it accuse you? Sometimes we can cover truth in our smiles. I think smiling is sometimes one of the most deceptive things we have learned to do. There is sometimes an underwritten, underlying hypocrisy in smiling. The face is there. It's like a bland green. You watch it in movies. You watch like the mafia movies. Somebody is having a drink with somebody else, smiles and hugs them and taps them on the back. And when they walk away, he tells them, make sure you finish him. But he was smiling. So sometimes we can't even take smiles so much. But there is something about a good conscience, a pure conscience, which we must have. Let me quickly read from the book of Acts and um, chapter 23 and 24, and then I'll end and until next week by the grace of God. Acts chapter 23, um, I think verse 1 um, Paul, looking earnestly at the council, he was being questioned about what he believed. He said, 
men and brothers, I have lived in all good conscience before God until this day. May you and I be able to say that, not just verbally, but backed by the decisions we make. May the decisions we make be born out of a good conscience. Find out, ask questions, seek different opinions, look for all the different sides, make an informed decision, but be guided by your conscience when you are making any decision concerning people's lives, concerning your future, concerning your children, concerning our economy, concerning our nation. What says your conscience? Until I come your way next week, by the grace of God, this is Pastor Forbes saying, have a good evening. Ask your conscience before you sleep. What are you saying? And I'm sure you'll have an answer. And when our conscience releases us, we are at peace. Have a good evening and good night. Borders become bridges, oceans become opportunities, and any day becomes a good day to connect. Be it to send money or receive it, our low rates, 10-minute transactions, and thousands of locations worldwide make connecting easy, and easy is good. MoneyGram. Money transfer. Choice is in your hands. Life and Direct Champion Zone. It's gonna be 12th November 2011. Life and Direct in Brickama Joko. Guest artist all the way from Senegal. Joe Lejama Noir Life and Direct in Brickama Joko. Tickets are $75 seats. Before 12 o'clock. After 12 o'clock, it's gonna be $100 flat. Guest artist in the house, Mighty Joe. Yo, Brixton Gangs, that's the tsunami. I'm on the pipeline coming. It has been a while. I'm there at it, you know, 12th November. Come on with the full family. Tsunami, Mighty Joe, come with me. Explosion. They are at it. Become a Joko. I'm out. Queen Bala, Star One, Life and Dark. Become a Joko. We're coming to your place. Become a Gold Minaka. Mr. Mr. Special, Saturday, 12th November 2011. Fale Joko Brikama. And the second champion sound. Dylan, Indiana from Dega, Senegal. Jole, from Ney Bonde. Jole from Senegal. Young people, and I'm not in your Atlantic chat. And the second, Jay Sasson against DJ. Ticket, $75 for midnight, $100 is after midnight. Why Joko Brikama, Barrelen, Dylan Kobondel, Bobo Bondel, and Jolly Jamanwa. Sponsored by Official.